Folks, we're glad you've joined us, Pastor Ralph and Pastor Jim. We're talking about your finances. We're talking about today about debt. One of those topics nobody really wants to talk about, Pastor Jim, because <laughs> debt is no fun at all. And, and this is one of the areas that everybody has a problem with. And most people, you're right, most people struggle with this. And this has caused marriage split ups, this has caused fights. Uh, forever and ever and ever, but we want to address it so that we as a body of Christ, as the church, know how to deal with some of these issues. And there's a, you know, there's a great story in, in the Bible that uh, in, in 2 Kings 4 that, um, that talks about debt, but you want to throw some thoughts out about debt before we, uh, before we start that? Uh, yes, I think the most important thing is to find out what the source of our debt problem is because one person may be one thing, another person may be something else. But most of our financial problems that we incur in our marriage and our everyday life, we encounter that has really not too much to do with the amount of money that we make, but it has everything to do with the amount of money that we spend. Mm. And so what we spend according to what we make becomes a habit. And unfortunately, many people get in the habit of spending more than what they make. Yes. And, uh, for example, we as Christians may say that, well, um, um, if I want it and it's on sale, then God must want me to have it. And if God <laughs> wants me to have it, it's okay to go into debt to get it. <laughs> and we, we, we justify our debt. But regardless of how much we make, if there's missionaries, for example, that, that they get accustomed to living on what they've got coming in, and you don't see too many missionaries that have debt problems mm -hmm. because they don't borrow money. Yeah. But we in the United States, for example, as uh, families, we have credit cards. And whenever we look at those credit card limits as cash, then we get into real problems because most people that look at credit card limits as cash that we have, they figure, well, um, I've got this limit of $1,000, for example. Um, I've got that much cash, so I'll spend that much. But what you're doing is incurring interest rates. Yeah. And usually <clears throat> we get into a habit of looking at them as cash. We have several credit cards. And if you have three or four credit cards with the limit on and what you borrow, then um, uh, you're in serious financial trouble, and most of your money is going out paying interest rates. Yeah. And, so, and service charges and, and everything else they can put on there. And service charges. Yeah. A, another thing is that um, we have a tendency to want to keep up with the Joneses. No. Or <laughs> <laughs> keep up with the neighbors because they have something we feel that well. They got a new car and we should have one too now. We should have one yeah. too. If we can afford it or not, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. And um, I, I, I told my wife one time, I said, honey, I said, I'm getting kind of tired of trying to keep up with the neighbors. I think we should drag them down to our level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Uh, our financial priorities is all out of order. Yeah. And um, we get into habits of paying our bills late. We get into yeah. habits of paying our bills on time. And that's one thing about my wife. And bless her heart, she gets a bill one day and she has to pay it the same day mm. or the next day. She never keeps it longer than that. But oftentimes there's those that get into the habit of not paying a bill until after they get cancellation notices. Ouch. Yeah, and that's that when it's very expensive. Yeah. You know, one of the other things I've, I've, I've noticed with people, they believe God for an increase in their pay, and they get like a 20% increase, which is generally not normally happen. But as soon as they get that, they have to have a larger home. They have to have a newer car. They have to, and, and the problem is you're not getting out of the problem that you're in. So exactly. if you get extra income, maybe what you need to do is keep your lifestyle where it is and start paying down those those debts and those credit cards. I, I, I almost think that the credit cards are a setup to destroy people's lives. They hand them out like candy. We have a very hard time distinguishing the difference between needs and greeds. 
And so I suggest to people, the next time you buy something, ask yourself the question, is this something that I need or is this something that I greed? <laughs> and if you greed it, don't ever, ever, ever go into debt for it. Now, there's, there's a great story in Second Kings where we talked about in, in chapter 4. And it says there's a certain woman um, of the wives of the son of the prophet that cried out to Elijah saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And, and know that your servant feared Jehovah and the lender has come to take my two children to himself for slaves. So back then, they couldn't do chapter 13. They couldn't do that. Back then when you had debt and, and you were a dad, that debt automatically transferred to your wife and it transferred to your kids and they would take the, your kids as slaves until they figured that debt was paid off. So this was a crisis. But you know what I find interesting? Mm -hmm. Because Elijah had a lot of people raised from the dead. This woman never asked to have her husband come back. No. <laughs> you ever think no. about that? He was a putz in the area of finances. He left them in a terrible mess. Now he dies, mm -hmm. and, and, and she's in a panic. So he was so irresponsible with his finances. You know, I, I find that happens when, when people are irresponsible in their finances. It's a generational thing. That's right. The That's kids right. struggle with it. The, their kids struggle with it. Their kids struggle with it. And it just seems to be, it's, it's like a spirit of debt that gets on them, and they just struggle with that to get out from underneath that. And this person was a man of God. He was a prophet. Yeah. He was working under Elijah, so he is a very faithful person. But still, just because you're a man of God doesn't exclude you or eliminate you from the possibilities of spending more money than what you have. Yeah. And spending more than what you have is a habit. And it has nothing to do. We can get into the habit of never spending any more than what we have. Yes. And so if we don't have the cash to pay for it, then we shouldn't be purchasing it. Because if we do spend more than what we have, then the next month we've got to pay back without the income that we have yeah. or debt. Plus, we've got to pay interest on what we just borrowed. Well, you know, I, people ask me all the time, how do you stay out of debt? And I, said to, I tell people this, if at all possible, live below your means. Mm. Yeah. When you live below your means, you always have some reserve. The below your means. And just as you mentioned there, that's a good indication to make a, a, a point that <clears throat> whenever we as a family member purchase something and have to go into debt for it, even a house, a car, or whatever it may be, it may be something that we feel that we truly need. We have to ask the question, if something happens to me, the breadwinner, is my family going to be able to pay yeah. for this? Or are they going to have to be out on the street? Or are you know, they going to have to sell the car? We, I, I see this happen time and time again. Sadly, I've done many funerals with this. And the, the fathers leave the family in such a mess. They have no life insurance to even cover the funeral expenses. And now the widows are stuck with these expenses. And they have maybe never haven't worked out of the home for years. Uh, and it's it, it's a real financial burden and a pressure. And I I actually had one I had a a lady come to me some years back, and after her husband passed away, she says I don't miss him. Thank God he's gone. And I and I looked at this story here, and I thought, you know, this woman might have been saying exactly the same thing. And how, would you want to leave the earth with your spouse and your kids thinking, thank God that guy's gone? because he was such a train wreck when we had him. Mm -hmm. And it, that, that's a hard thing to when you sit there and you say, well, that's really a heavy topic. It is, but the reality of it is you and I have to make decisions in our homes, in our families, mm -hmm. and put discipline. I know today discipline is like a, a curse word. Mm -hmm. You know, get disciplined in your finance, get disciplined in your life, get disciplined, get disciplined. But what is it? Jesus said, I want you to become disciples. What is that? Disciplined followers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I just think as we look through uh, the situations that, that we're dealing with, with people with debt and all the pain and stuff that they've gone through. And listen, we're not here to criticize you. So if you're here right now saying, man, I'm so over my head with all of this, you know, the good news is that the Lord will help you get out of it. But once you get out of it, you need to change your, the way you do things. You need to have a discipline on you that if you don't have the money, you don't spend it. 
you know, I, people always look at me and they say, Pastor, your, your car is not that fancy. And I said, I know. I said, but it starts every time I get into it mm -hmm. and it drives. Mm -hmm. And people look at me and they say, well, you can have whatever you want. And I said, you're, you're absolutely right. I said, but I choose to put other priorities ahead. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to have the latest. What I wouldn't mind it some days, I think it would be kind of cool. But the reality is it still gets you from A to B. I spent 20 years in the insurance business trying to solve problems of people's debts, getting insurance to cover it. And you'd be surprised there's more people that has overloaded with debt than what we actually realize. And more people, and then that does carry on into the church. It carries on yeah. through God's people. And so God teaches us, however, to develop a priority in our life of getting into the habit of putting God first. Yes. Folks that put ourself first, take care of self, and then everything else would be second, usually end up being overloaded with debt. Mm -hmm. More money than, or more debt than what they have money to be able to pay for it. It's usually a problem. But those that have the Lord as the number one priority in their yeah. life, then the, once your priorities change, then God's work is more important than my needs, or God's needs mm. is more important than mine. And so you get your priorities in order, put God first, family second, and then if we have money left to do what we want to do and um, take care of our family. And God, once we put it in that order, God wants us to have things that we love yeah. to have, enjoy life. He wants us to have that. He doesn't want to take from us. Yeah. He wants to give to us. And yeah. in that manner, once we get our priorities in order, we would have more for God to give to us. I, I think sometimes God wants us to have stuff, but if we buy it and we put it in debt, the stuff has us. We don't have the stuff. That's now right. we're under pressure. Now we're like feeling the pressure every month to make that payment, to make this payment, to make that payment. I've told my kids for years, I said, uh, kids, if, if, if at all possible, don't have loans on cars if you don't have to have them. And they said, why not? I said, well, save up the money, put it aside, and, 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 and then just simple stuff like that. If you have a young family, make sure you have life insurance. God forbid something happened to you or even happened to your spouse and things just happen in life. I have some coverage so that you've got a little bit of a cushion. And, and uh, you know, and, and th those are just responsible things to do. You know, well, I believe in God. I know I believe God too, but you know what? Things can happen in life unexpectedly. And then all of a sudden, you're in the middle of a crisis. Things that we feel we just have to have, and we sometimes go into debt to get them. Then once we have them, put them back in a the storage and they don't even use them. For yeah. them. Find out two years later, we never used it. Yeah. And so did we need it to begin <laughs> yeah. with. Yeah, no doubt. And even when it's on sale and it's a good deal, yeah. do we really have to have it? And because uh, all we're going to do is clutter up or, or a spot to put it and then have to take care of it after that. So I, I want to encourage you, um, if you're struggling in the area of debt, we're going to have part two of this and maybe even a part three of this to take you through and show you how to be able to walk out of this, how Jesus um, showed us how to do it, how the, uh, how the prophet Elijah showed us how to do it so that you don't stay perpetually in this cycle. Because maybe you're thinking, man, I never am going to ever get out of this. My life is just a mess. I want to pray for you right now because if you need a breakthrough in this area, it starts with us surrendering ourselves to the Lord and praying and asking God to step in and help us in this area. And then yeah, I want to invite you to make sure that you join us the next week as we continue on in this series of getting out of debt and having that breakthrough that you'll be able to do that. But let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, every person that's watching, Lord, that are maybe struggling in debt, maybe Amen. just not able to get out of this. Amen. Lord, I, I pray right now, Lord, that number one, you would give them an awakening, a spiritual awakening, and give them the mind of Christ, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, knowledge, and understanding, Amen. that their eyes would be open, Lord, that also that they would if, if they if they just struggle in this, Lord, that you would give them the discipline to see what's causing that struggle that's causing them that they have to have things, Lord, that uh, we would break that assignment, that curse in their lives, this, 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 this debt curse off of their yes. lives. Father, we just pray right now that you just help us, each and every one of us, as we walk through in our lives, that we make sound, godly, disciplined decisions 
and that we see our families and our and our lives just do amazing. Father, we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you guys. Thanks for joining us for the 15-minute financial nuggets. And make sure you join us next week as we continue on in this.